WLKY TV, Channel 32, Louisville. Now, Steve Bergen, Julia Yarbo, Linda McLaughlin with the weather, and Rick Van Hoos on sports. This is Channel 32 News, the weekend report. Good evening. Topping our news tonight, it's a wild night in Cincinnati. The Queen City is celebrating a world championship. The underdog Reds did it in four straight games. Our Gary Collins is in the heart of Cincinnati where thousands have gathered for one huge party. They crawled out of the woodwork. That's exactly what they were doing. They say they'll be here probably all through the night. And if you're wondering about how rowdy it could get. Pete Rose! Pete Rose! I figured somebody would talk about Pete Rose. Steve, we are in Fountain Square in downtown Cincinnati. This is a half block. This is a half block set aside for World Series celebrations in this case. You can see a lot of people around here. Well, there's estimated about 50,000 people. And of course, it hasn't been that long since the game. Most of these people are in bars. Uh, they were at home watching the series, and they all came down here. This is the place to be. Now, if you think it's loud here, you should have seen it about an hour ago. At last, that was me. The bar right down the street. We had our camera in there. The last that was made was just the reps of the sound. And it's quiet no more down here on Fountain Square. People are just saying, going out of the woodworks. That's exactly what they've been doing. impossible. Cincinnati police are down here. They don't expect there to be any, any type of uh, ruckus. But I can tell you they do have their helmets on. These people are very excited, obviously. They say they're going to be out here all night. Let's go back to the studio. I think we caught enough of that to understand that we're having a little party think, in Cincinnati they're, uh, tonight. They're enjoying themselves up there, <laughs> I think. It's a good thing that the pictures are telling the story, but <laughs> we couldn't hear much of what Gary was saying. There are choice of, uh, assignments, but I don't know if that's one of them. What do you think? I hope he gets out of there alive. <laughs> we'll be crossing our fingers for him. Well, Rick, uh, big night, obviously. It's almost unbelievable. We were expecting a sweep, and that's exactly what we got, but it was the Cincinnati Reds that were doing the sweeping as they took this year's World Series, the 87th World Series, in four games. Take a look at the game winner. This is Hal Morris in the eighth inning, tied up at one all. Hal with a sack fly. That was long enough to get Herm Winningham home with the game winner. Two to one is the score now. Jose Rio pitched a wonderful game, then the Nasty Boys came in. This is Randy Myers that closed the door on the Oakland A's. A pop fly off the bat of Carney Lansford to Todd Benzinger, and the celebration was on. It was the fifth championship for the Cincinnati Reds. They win two to one. It was a great day in Oakland. Our Fred Calgill was in Oakland for all the festivities and uh, will be joining us with uh, all the hoopla going out there. I hope it's uh, not the same thing that's going on uh, in Cincinnati. Now we have Fred. Fred, unbelievable, wasn't it? Rick, it's been an amazing story the last few days here in Oakland. I'm joined by Herm Winningham, who was a huge man in this game, a man that had come in in the last second when big injuries happened early in the game. How does all this feel? Tremendous. You can't express yourself. There's, there's no words to express it. You just got to try to sit back and try to take it all in. It's happening so fast. Mrs. Winningham? I'm just thrilled. I'm, I'm happy. I'm so happy I don't know what to do. Uh, just to, so he could get into the game. I'm sorry that Billy and um, Eric got hurt because I was worried. I said, oh, my goodness. Now I know the pressure was back on him, which put it back on me. And I was just hoping he could do it, do the job for Billy and Eric, help him out. That's super. So how does this taste? I've never seen one of those live in person before, the champagne. Hey, I'm telling you, I hadn't had a swallow this yet. But go for I, it. Can I go for it's it? It's yours. Go for it. All right. How's it taste? <laughs> good. Real good. I like that. All right. Here for a second. Paul O'Neill, same question, the champagne. What's it Bruce? taste like? They better after you win. I tell you, I'm not a champagne drinker, but I'll drink it tonight. I imagine you poured a little bit on a few people, huh? I've had it pour it on me and everything else, and that's part of the celebration. But is it worth it? It's really not going to sink in on what we've done until probably tomorrow. But we got all night to work on it. Everybody thought you weren't going to do it. You proved them wrong. I know. I think by beating them four in a row, that makes a statement that we're a good team and. Uh, 
for now, we get to go home and size up those rings. All right. Can I keep that as a souvenir? I might do that. Thank you. <laughs> That's it from here, Rick. It's quite a story. The Reds sweeping the A's, the unthinkable. The A's were favored to sweep 4-1, to but the Reds are the 1990 World Champs of Baseball. Back to you in Louisville. Fred, if Paul's still around, why don't you see what it feels like locker room celebration? Get Paul to take that bottle over your head, Fred. I want to see... Uh, he's Luckily, he's already gone, but actually, Rick, I've already, if you can tell from my hair, been drenched by the champagne. I've been in the locker room for about 15 minutes, and believe me, uh, the jacket's kind of sticky. <laughs> Fred, have you ever experienced anything like that? What was it like in the locker room? It, it's an unusual experience, and for the first time maybe in my life, I'm at a loss for words to really tell you. You, you see these guys who worked so hard since February, and now it's almost November for a collective goal, and, and all year long, nobody thought they could do it. 162 games, they led the whole way the first time in National League history, a team led from day one all the way. Nobody thought they could do that. People thought they continued to fold up. They blew a big lead the second half of the season. They had a losing record, but still the team hung on. They were not favored against Pittsburgh. The Pirates ended up losing as the Reds came back to beat them, and now the Reds sweep the unthinkable, do the unthinkable and sweep the A's. All right, Fred, thank you very much. We look forward to hearing some of the post-game comments uh, tomorrow afternoon. Take care. All right. Okay. okay, thanks, Fred. Unbelievable. And I want to point out one other thing. In 76, it's almost scary, an omen, because the Reds swept the New York Yankees in four games on the exact same dates. October 16th, the first game, 17th, the second, 19th, and then the 20th, they claim another title. I don't know. I don't believe in those things, but... Uh, you sure never know. Spooky. I yeah. figured it'll, it'll sink in for those players when they get those checks. In the World Series <laughs> yeah, checks. probably about a hundred and something thousand each. Okay, thank you much. In other news on this Saturday, an investigation continues tonight into an early morning fatal house fire near Frankfurt. Earl Spiegel, his wife Nancy, and their two children died from smoke inhalation. Don Grimes has more. Franklin County firefighters got the call from a nearby neighbor around 1.30 this morning. They arrived at the Benson Valley Road home within seven minutes. Within 15, the fire was completely out. Despite their speed, no one got out alive. While performing rescue, we found uh, two adult fatalities and two uh, preteens. Um, total of four fatalities. Fire Chief Cheatham says he surprised 39-year-old Earl Wayne Spiegel and his 31-year-old wife Nancy did not escape. Their slightly burned bodies were discovered on the lower level living room floor. We think that maybe they were in bed and after they were awakened, uh, maybe tried to exit the house and couldn't make it. Um, all four fatalities were overcome by smoke. On the other side of the house, Cheatham says four-year-old daughter Jessica may also have woken up and in a daze moved into the room of her 10-year-old sister, where they were both discovered dead. In the daylight, fire crewmen shifted through the rubble looking for clues as to the fire's cause. Let's see how these, take, take, take a look at your wood box. See how these are all rounded on this side? That's putting everything back over here. There's several things there. There's. Uh, there's a wood burning stove, there's a, a cooking stove, and there's a baseboard heater, and at this point, we don't know. At this point, Franklin County firefighters don't know if this home was equipped with a smoke detector, but they do know that all four family members died early this morning of smoke inhalation, something that in most cases can be prevented with enough warning. In Frankfurt, Dawn Grimes, Channel 32 News. The Spiegels are the first people to die in a fire in Franklin County this year. A 20-year-old Goshen man was struck and killed by a car in Odom County overnight. He's identified as Michael Hayden. Hayden was struck by a vehicle driven by a teenager. The teenager's name was not released by police. There was also a fatal accident in Carroll County overnight. 16-year-old Robert Carter of Carrollton was killed. He was a passenger in a car that left the road and hit a tree. The driver of the vehicle, 16-year-old James Baker, also of Carrollton, was hospitalized. It was a night of celebration for residents of three Louisville City neighborhoods. <laughs> This party comes on the heels of the Kentucky State Supreme Court ruling that the city unlawfully declared the Staniford, Prestonia, and Highland Park neighborhoods blighted in order to get the land for airport expansion. The high court also ruled against any further demolition of homes in the areas. After two hours of deliberating, a Broward County, Florida jury found three members of the rap group Two Live Crew not guilty on obscenity charges. 
Those charges stem from an adults only performance at a Hollywood, Florida night spot. The attorney for band leader Luther Campbell had argued the First Amendment protects the freedom of speech, even if it's nasty. Two live crew's lyrics have been criticized for their sexual preoccupation and as demeaning to women. Across the country today, thousands of Americans marched and demonstrated to let President Bush know they want U.S. troops out of the Persian Gulf. Nearly 10,000 people rallied in New York, taking up the chant, Hell no, we won't go. We won't fight for Texaco. The nationwide demonstrations are the largest so far against U.S. involvement in the Persian Gulf. Organized by groups such as labor unions, veterans, and church organizations, protests were held in Atlanta, Boston, San Francisco, and 13 other U.S. cities. In other Gulf developments, U.S. Defense Secretary Dick Cheney says U.N. economic sanctions against Iraq are beginning to have an effect. During a news conference following his meeting with French leaders today in Paris, Cheney said Iraqi gas shortages will hamper the Iraqi military forces occupying Kuwait. Meanwhile, in Baghdad, Iraqis are already waiting in long lines for gas rationing coupons, attempting to stock up before gasoline rationing begins Tuesday. A budget agreement could come Sunday night, says Senate Finance Committee Chairman Lloyd Benson, but getting it through Congress two weeks before Election Day will be tough, according to congressional sources. That's because the plan will include increased taxes. The House budget bill calls for higher income taxes for the wealthy, while the Senate plan calls for doubling the federal gasoline tanks. Meanwhile, Americans weary over the long and tedious budget process are waiting to see just how hard their pocketbooks will be hit. Karen Southern found out how some Jefferson Countyans feel about the tax proposals being considered in Washington. Larry Colt says he doesn't know much about the federal budget deficit. He's more comfortable talking about horses. I'm on patches. I've got some customers. But he says whatever Congress is doing on Capitol Hill, talk of raising gas prices makes him nervous. This is hard for anybody to make it with high gas prices. I just like to see the gas prices come down again. That's about all I'm aggravated about. Congress is also talking about raising taxes on luxury items like cars, the ones that cost more than $30,000. Colt says that's all right with him. Mm, nothing. I couldn't afford a car cost that. <laughs> it wouldn't hurt me at all. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he says everyone should be treated equally, rich and poor alike. That's where he and Arliss Lindsay disagree. The luxury items that we can't afford and never be able to afford should be taxed because they're going to buy them anyway. Lindsay says he's fed up with politicians. He says it's high time they stop arguing and try to get down to work. I, I'm not objecting to the people that's in there. I'm just saying they should get along and work together for the benefit of the United States. Whatever Congress decides to do on Capitol Hill, Arliss and Larry say they'll just make the best of it. They just hope the powers of be keep average people like them in mind as they iron out their massive spending plan. Karen Southern, Channel 32 News. Congress has until Wednesday to come up with a federal budget agreement. Everything you ever wanted to know about your local health department but were afraid to ask was answered today at the Bashford Manor Mall. This environmental health fair offered information on rodent and mosquito control, what to do in case of food poisoning, and how to handle hazardous materials. There's also a chance for the Louisville and Jefferson County Health Department to explain just what it does for the taxpayer. Jefferson County, I think there's not a very good understanding of what the health department does for Jefferson County residents. And we do this, we did it last year. It's sort of environmental health week was a couple weeks ago, and this is our first chance to come out just sort of to show people what we do, what their tax dollars are doing, and, and what services we provide. And a lot of people aren't even aware that we have this many services. And if you missed the environmental health fair, the health department is ready to answer your questions at this number, 625-6650. That is 625-6650. Up next, we may have seen the best of this weekend's weather. Linda McLaughlin will tell us uh, how her Sunday forecast is shaping up. Stay with us. It's happening again. Kroger is dropping prices. We've always worked to keep prices low, and now we're pushing prices even lower. On things you use every day, 15,000 low prices. And now is the time to get them, but you don't have to get them all at once. 
Value keeps us number one. This is before. A liquid nitrogen capsule minus 196 degrees Celsius. This is after. A healthy newborn baby, 36 degrees Celsius. Before, after. Channel 32 News medical reporter Carolyn C. has the story of Louisville's first frozen embryo baby in a special report. Infertility, a new hope for life. Beginning Monday on the Channel 32 News 5 o'clock report. I can't believe that was me, Ed Koch. Look at me. I lost 35 pounds in five months with Ultra Slim Fast. Pretty amazing, right? I tried so many diets before, but the Ultra Slim Fast plan really worked for me. And the best part is, it's good for me. I had a delicious shake for breakfast, another for lunch, and then a sensible dinner. I said I would do it, and I did it. And I never felt better in my life. Ultra Slim Fast. Give us a week. We'll take off the weight. PSI Energy is shattering myths about gas savings in comfort. With up to 30% savings over gas on homes that meet electric smart saver standards. And if you still think gas is the comfort choice, PSI will guarantee your comfort with a high efficiency electric heating system. Still think gas is smarter? Consider that a shattered myth. Be a smart saver. Save up to 30% over gas. Call 1-800-622-HEAT. This is the last Lazy Boy store-wide sale before Christmas. Everything is on sale. Everything. But it's this Saturday, Sunday, and Monday only at the Lazy Boy Showcase Shop. So get shaken. And Linda McLaughlin joined us now, and hopefully some good news for the weather. <laughs> Well, you couldn't get much better than today, so I guess you can say it's a downhill battle from now. But if you like the rain, you're, you're in for a treat. I guess we could all use a change about now. Let's check out some current conditions. However, our temperature is still comfortable. 51 degrees, relative humidity of 80%. Winds are southeasterly at 5 miles an hour, and our barometer is holding steady. Let's go across the river into Indiana and check with one of our weather watchers from Lanesville, Indiana. 58 degrees there. Esther Hartman says, it was wonderful out there today, and please give us some more just like today. Well, I don't know about that. We'll have to wait and see, but we're going to try to squeeze a few more hours of some nice weather for you tomorrow. Our high temperature today, beautiful. In fact, 12 degrees warmer than it was yesterday. 70 degrees. We have a beautiful sunset as you're overlooking downtown Louisville. Our early morning low, a chilly start to the day, 39, but it will be much milder tonight. Let's take a look at the sunrise for tomorrow morning, 7.57, and the sunset at 6.57 tomorrow evening. To the maps we go and take a look at the cloud cover now. We're going to be seeing quite a bit of cloud cover overnight tonight. These are all high, thin clouds over the Ohio Valley back into Kentuckiana, but back to our west, boy, what a mass, and that is what's going to be heading on to the east in association with the frontal system. This is a storm system that is moving slowly right now, but we'll pick up some speed tomorrow. We'll see increasing cloudiness during the day ahead of this front, and behind it, plenty of rain with these clouds. So, looks like we're going to have a fairly nice start to the day tomorrow, but then the clouds will be on the increase. Putting the maps in motion, taking you back into the past few hours, we are seeing the clouds advancing quickly to the northeast right now. The cloud cover of the Ohio Valley and Kentuckiana today wasn't enough to keep out the sunshine, but it will keep the temperatures on the mild side tonight. Back to the west of us, that's what will be heading our way during the next few hours, moving into Indiana, northwestern Indiana, during the next two to three hours, and will continue to move on to the east. As you head to school and work early Monday morning, we will be seeing that front stretch right across Kentucky and Indiana, and that will be bringing some rain for the beginning of your week. Let's go to our forecast for tonight. We are looking for mostly clear skies, temperatures into the upper 40s. And for tomorrow, increasing clouds, a slight chance of an afternoon showers, but the bulk of it will come late in the day. Our high temperature tomorrow will be near 70 degrees. During the next five days, looks like a rainy beginning to the week, then clearing out. Slight chance of rain around hump day and clearing out again. So whatever you like, it looks like we're going to have it and temperatures will remain mild into the 60s. Thanks a lot, Linda. Sure. Okay.
Coming up in sports, more on the uh, World Series champions from Oakland. And we'll find out if U of L wrapped up a bowl bid. With Van Poos is next. This is a mile. This is a gallon of gas. Today, it might interest you to know that no car in Kentuckyana gets more of these out of one of these than the Geo Metro. And now, get up to twelve fifty cash back or seven nine financing on a new Geo plus six hundred dollars GMAC down payment assistance for first time buyers. Your Kentuckyana Chevy Geo dealers have more ways to save you gasoline and money than anyone. At Bad Diseased, we know having a baby is a big challenge, especially if you already have kids. Because now, there'll be more demands on your time, your energy, your patience, and your finances. That's where our new addition can help. It gives you informative newsletters, discounts, sibling classes, and lots of other helpful services to make having your new addition a little easier. Call Bad Diseased for more information about our new addition today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. A cheeseburger and a coke. Ah! A cheeseburger and a coke. Ah! I could have gone to Shoney's, but think of the time I'm saving here. Ah! I said a cheeseburger and a coke. Somebody talk to me. Ah! It's day bed and bunk bed month here at Winter Furniture. And to celebrate, all our day beds in a variety of styles and colors will be on sale starting as low as $148, including your mattress. Also on sale are the very popular red and blue bunk beds from the traditional twin twin to the new twin full, priced as low as $198. All our beds will be marked down here at Winter Furniture, 2530 Dixie Highway. Tonight, <laughs> I thought they were going to blow it. They had so many, so many opportunities in the early innings, the you mid know, innings. Actually. I said last night. I said I don't think. I think the A's would win that. Well, I was wrong. I said, well, mm -hmm. surely with Dave Stewart on the mound, Reds can't beat him two times in a row. <laughs> Surprise, right? Game four of the World Series is in the books, and it belongs to the Cincinnati Reds. And the 87th World Series also belongs to the Reds. Let's look at the highlights. First inning, Willie McGee with a shot. Eric Davis had the catch, but fell, dropped the ball. He went to the hospital for a bruised kidney. McGee got a double and later scored. It was 1-0. Billy Hatcher also went to the hospital. He was hit on the wrist. Now, stay that way until the eighth. This is a crucial play. Paul O'Neill with a bunt. Willie Randolph, did he step off the bag or not? Well, the umpire said he did, but look at it again. I don't think he did. It should have been. Runners on second and 31 out. But instead, it was bases loaded and no outs. And then Glenn Braggs comes through with that uh, shot that scores Barry Larkin. That ties the game at one all. Next batter. Hal Morris with a deep sacrifice fly that's deep enough to allow Herm Winningham to scoot home with, with uh, what turned out to be the game winner. It's two to one Reds. And then from there, Jose Rio was something. Because then the Nasty Boys came on and they shut him down. This is the final out of the ball game. Cincinnati, the champions of baseball for 1990. With an improbable sweep over Oakland. Chemistry says it all. I mean, we had great chemistry all year. We lost Eric Davis and Billy Hatcher. Billy was so hot, and, and guys filled in. We got a great group of guys, 25 guys. Um, you know, it was just, it was outstanding all year. No fights in the clubhouse. Everybody loved each other all year, and that's, that's why we're winners. Even though we won the World Series, we were winners way before we got here. That was Rob Dibble who did an outstanding job uh, in relief. Jose Rio was the MVP, but on this uh, team, Boy, it is a team. You had guys like Eric Davis in the first game pick him up, uh, Billy Hatcher in the second, Chris Sabo, and then Jose Rio just gunned him down in the final game. And the Reds simply whipped him. They outhit him 45 to 28, outscored them 22 to 8. The Cincinnati uh, Reds salute. You deserve to be champions of baseball for 1990. The Louisville Cardinals aren't over the mountain yet, but uh, they're on top of it and can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And it has a bowl game written all over it, folks. I want to tell you. They played in Pittsburgh today, and well, this was the play of the game as it turned out. John Ganey with the interception of the Alex Van Pelt pass. Ganey races down to the three-yard line, and that put Louisville in great possession. Curtis Lipsy goes in for the touchdown, and it was 17-6, Cardinals in the second half.
Browning Nagel suffered a separated shoulder in the first half, but he came back and threw this touchdown pass to Ken McKay. It was 27 to 6, 21 point lead. But late in the fourth quarter, uh, Pittsburgh got two touchdowns thanks to Rodney uh, Ronald Redman. It wasn't enough as Louisville held on to win 27 to 20. And needless to say, the cards were all smiles when they returned home tonight. And a couple hundred fans plus a pep band showed up to greet the team out at Stanford Field. Here's what they had to say about today's big victory. We're 6-1-1. One one. We're right where we want to be. We've got three more games left, but we've gotten the recognition now. People know that Louisville's for real. What really makes this game so big is the fact now we've gone east to the two of the biggest teams in uh, America, West Virginia and Pittsburgh, have beaten them in their home stadium with their officials and uh, have come out with two victorious ones. So it just shows you how far this Louisville program has developed to this point in time. Well, I'm not sure we're in the driver's seat yet, but we'll be able to select, I think, among many bowls. I, I don't know which ones yet, but uh, the Copper Bowl and Tucson's showing a lot of interest. The Peach Bowl was up there. They've talked to us. They're very interested in the All-American Bowl. So there's three bowls that are extremely interested in having us participate in their, in their bowls. It sounds good. The Cardinals are now 6-1-1 one one with Western Kentucky, Cincinnati, and Boston College remaining on the schedule. Meanwhile, UK was down in Tiger Country hoping to pull another upset down in Death Valley, but it didn't happen. LSU got on the board first. Harvey Williams with a super run, 60 yards for the game's first touchdown. LSU led 7-0 on top of Kentucky. But UK did rally. Brad Smith will give off to Al Baker, and Al Baker had a wonderful game for the uh, Kentucky Wildcats. He got some good blocking by Terry Samuels there. That sprung him for 30-yard touchdown run, and it was 7-7. to -7. UK led 10-7 to -7 and then 13-10. to -10. Then Harvey Williams, well, he was doing it to him. He makes this touchdown reception, and then I guess you call this the flop. Good celebration. It was 24-13, to -13. but UK never gave up. Brad Smith with the quarterback keeper, 24-20, to -20, but that was as close as they got. The final down in Baton Rouge, LSU 30, Kentucky 20 was the final. Next week, the Cats are at home to face Georgia. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock. The Cats are 2-5 and five in the season now. 20th-ranked Indiana had hopes of moving on in top uh, in the Big Ten standings, but it didn't work out that way in Minnesota. Well, there was absolutely no offense. The uh, Hoosiers were just blowing teams away in the first games, but today Trent Green just simply got smothered by the Minnesota defense. It was only 3-0 at the half. IU was down. But uh, they had no better luck in the second half. The Golden Gophers got the only touchdown of the game and went on to win 12 to nothing. So Indiana is now 4-1-1. One one. Elsewhere in college football from today, number one, West Virginia beat Wake Forest 49-14. The big game here on CBS, Notre Dame beats number two, Miami, 29-20. And that's the last time that those two are scheduled to meet in a regular season series. It was Alabama over Tennessee, an upset there, 9-3 the final. It was Nebraska over Oklahoma State, 31 to three. Florida State nipped Auburn by a field goal, 20 to 17. It was Illinois over Michigan State. Elsewhere, Houston beat SMU. It was Iowa, one point better than Michigan, so they lost another heartbreaker. It was Georgia Tech and North Carolina ending in a 13-13 tie. A lot of upsets. Maybe the car.